Hey, I'm Dr. Juan Valdez with Reasons for Hope. And today I want to talk to you about the Titanic. Well, not really the Titanic, but how many of you watched the movie, The Titanic? Do you realize you're never going to get those three hours back of your life? Three hours. Well, we all know the story. The unsinkable ship sunk. And lots of people lost their lives. The, the New York Times headline that day said that 1,250 people perished in that sinking. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I believe there's a parallel between the sinking of the Titanic and modern-day Darwinism. I think the Darwinian ship is also sinking. I believe that everybody on board that ship is so confident that the ship will never sink that they are unaware of the fact that it's already taken on water. Now, some scientists have already jumped ship. And these scientists are not necessarily Christians. Some of them are not. But they all agree on one thing. The Darwinian model of origins doesn't answer the questions. As a matter of fact, it creates more questions than it actually answers. So I want to draw a parallel and say that what is sinking that ship today is an iceberg as well, or a series of icebergs of truth. Because when the icebergs of truth collide with Darwinism, there's nowhere to go for that ship except to sink. Darwin himself, in the origin of the species, specified that there were, uh, th there were changes that could be categorized as general evolution, but other changes would be categorized as special evolution. So he had the two categories. We simply changed the names to make it easier to understand which is which. So the first is microevolution. Now microevolution is evolution or variation that takes place within a specific kind and produces countless observed variations in plants and in animals. The key to microevolution is the examples that we have. We have the Galapagos finches, we have new strains of viruses, we have antibiotic resistant bacteria, variations in stickled back armor, etc. So we, we have a lot of evidence. And microevolution is possible because it's genetic variation that does not require any statistically significant increase in functional information. In other words, these changes occur with what's already there, the information already there. No new information is needed for these changes. And I'll tell you this, as Christians, we have no problem with microevolution. There's no problem in stating, in stating or believing that changes can occur within the different kinds. And so I want us to avoid the mistake of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And the mistake I often hear Christians make is to claim that evolution is a lie and that it never happened. Now, this mistake is failing to distinguish between microevolution and macroevolution, which we're going to look at in a minute. Think about this. This is not in any way contrary to what the Word of God says. As a matter of fact, the fact that we are able to adapt to changes in our atmosphere, changes in, 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 our, in our diets because of changes in our environment, that only speaks to me of the fact that we are designed by an engineer, a brilliant mind that is, has engineered us to be able to adapt to changes. If God had created a world in which every living organism was so rigid and static that a change in temperature would kill us all off, that would not be a good design. However, that's not how God did it. God did with us what engineers do today in laboratories. And it, it goes to show the incredible level of intelligent design that is found in the created order. Now, having said that, let's take a look at the second type of evolution. We have no problem with microevolution. When I speak of Darwinism, I'm not speaking of microevolution. I'm speaking of macroevolution. That's what we have a problem with. What is macroevolution? Macroevolution is the theory that all living things we observe today evolved from a simpler life form over billions of years. It's the molecules to man hypothesis that every living thing shares a common ancestor. Now, how much ex evidence do we have? How many examples can we list of macroevolution observed, be it in the fossil record or in general in, in the natural order? None. Not a single example is available to us. Not a single example. And the biggest problem with macroevolution is that it requires, for these changes to happen, it requires the influx of additional information. 
into the, hum the, 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 the human genome or the animal genome, into the DNA, you have to add information to be able to make these changes from one species to the next, from one kind to the next. And that is a significant problem.